Hello, and welcome back to Ponery's Kicking It Old School. I believe this is episode 12. This is usually about the halfway point for my seasons, but I'm not sure how many episodes I'm going to go this season, to be honest. So let's just say it's episode 12, season 3. And as you can see, this is the closing screen of the last episode of L.A. Noir. So we finished this uh, this case here, and I thought we would go ahead and start up on the next one. You may notice that my lobby for working stiffs, stiffs has a lot of activity, and it's because uh, in between the last recording and this one, I'm doing everything out of sequence, first of all. Uh, I'm recording this on a weekday for once, not usually on the weekends, but it's going to be released on the weekends. I had just done a live show on a friend's channel, and... Those are a lot of the panelists of that show, and we were having like an after chat party thing. But I have work to do, and the work is never done. So they can have their chat up there, and we will be down here. So anyway, we finished the console's car, which was a DLC case that was added. And we're going to get back to the main story now. Shall we? You have any plans for Weekend Liberty, Jack? My sisters have been working in Los Angeles in a bomber factory. They're coming down to visit. I'm meeting them at the station at 6. Good for you, Jack. Are they cute? They're my sisters, Hank. Attention! Final inspection before Liberty. Good job, Kelso. Are we going somewhere, gentlemen? Listen. Full inspection. It had better be exceptional if any of you want liberty this weekend. These guys are OCS trainees. They're not enlisted. Kelso, this carbine. The bore is dirty. No, it isn't. Are you arguing with me, Kelso? Do what you need to do, Sergeant. You know the bore is immaculate. Weekend liberty canceled. Two-day field drill. Man. Clean this rifle. No. No. Do you know the penalty for insubordination, Kelso? Jack, don't do it. Forget him, Hank. He doesn't have what it takes. Are you two finished? Are you going to clean this rifle? No, Sergeant. Cole is right. I'm going to stop playing games and join a rifle company and fight the real enemy. So he's dropped out of OCS to become an enlisted man so he didn't have to put up with a sergeant. Like, that sequence should have probably never happened. These guys are coming in as second lieutenants. They outranked that guy. I don't get it. That's not going to buff out. That looked like it hurt. All right, gentlemen, I just got this handed to me. A hit-and-run felony at Ray's Cafe, 208 North Los Angeles. Got a patrolman on site. The coroner's on his way. Get down there, see if you can find any witnesses who can put a make on the car. The mouthpiece store strips off me at the grand jury. Case got thrown out. I can make out the now car. The that was a Lincoln Continental Mark I convertible. I'm thinking of moving up to a 45. But I'm a car guy, so I notice stuff like that. <laughs> I'm just playing the French country so I can nail the country. All right, let's get to work. Coroner says it's going to take at least a week to get an ID. We are not rude, driving the Buick. Why am I auto running? I mean, I'm not opposed to it, but what should we drive? A Chevy truck or a 30... Is it a 38 Buick? Let's drive the Buick. Me personally, I had a 41. It looked, from back here, it looked more or less the same. It didn't have a split back window. Tail lights were slightly different. From the side, it looked more or less like this. But the front end on mine was different. And they do have a 41 Buick in the game, so... They have that. Looks anyway. like the DA is going to press charges. 
And Rodriguez might do time. I'll speak to the DA. She suffered enough. No, and I don't know, Cole. Do time. She's an easy make, and the DA likes convictions. I'll convince him to let him go. <laughs> How do you do that? I'll give him something better. Mine was black too, so from back here it looks pretty appropriate. Next right. I'm gonna say this is the next right. It's not. That's be on the other side of the building. Ray's Cafe. Apparently, horse is on the menu. Detectives! Over here! Cole Phelps. Traffic. What have we got? Thick as a white male named Lester Patterson. Walked out of the bar and into the street. Car hit over there, and he ended up here, dead on impact by the look of it. Have you canvassed the area? The only one with anything useful to contribute is the young lady over there. She lives above the bar, named Shannon Perry. No, it's not a stage name. 24 years old, she left Kansas to follow the yellow brick road. Is that so? We'll take a formal statement later. Right now, we're going to take a look around. Yeah, we should do that. Why am I auto running? Hmm. Huh, I don't know. So the driver managed to brake before the impact. Sure. This blood is a long way from the body. The car must have been going like a bat out of hell. Body traveled a good 20 feet. Yeah, well, they were hauling ass. All right, Mal, what do you got for me? Phelps, you should take a look at the body. This poor guy didn't stand a chance. All right. I ended on his face and ended up here. Car must have struck him from behind. His face is not... That, that injury on his face is not indicative of a man who landed on his face being hit that hard. I'm sorry. Like, his nose should be missing. <laughs> Let's check his hands. Like, road rash should have erased most of his face. I'm sorry. Alright, let's check his other hand. Ain't got nothing on him. Okay. Let's check his coat pockets. Who are you? Lester Patterson. We can notify next of kin. Okay. 36 years old. I'll take this. Come on, let me have it. No? Alright, fine. I'll put it back. It's not going to need it where he's going. Come on. Alright, fine. Maybe his next of kin can use a buck. Let's check this pocket here. What do we have here? Dear Mr. Patterson, it is with great pleasure that we acknowledge the receipt of your application. Pre-approval has been granted to raise the weekly premium of your life insurance policy from $370 a week to $590 a week. This raise became effective on January 1st, four days prior to this letter. Were our standard veteran care policy entitled you a lump sum payout of $10,000 in the event of your untimely death or permanent incapacitation, this new plan secures your beneficiaries a sum of $16,000. And the words, what the fuck? <laughs> we at California Fire and Life thank you and wish you good health and security for the future. Ernest Benson. Has, has life insurance. 
Gee. Guy gets a, a raise and suddenly dies? Hmm. Yeah, right, let's check homie's face. Make sure there's nothing out of the ordinary. Pretty sure we're done with the stiff. What have you got on the victim? From all reports, he was intoxicated at the time of the accident. I'll know how intoxicated once I've done the autopsy. Looking him over now, I'd say he died on impact. What about the chest wound? Isn't that inconsistent? Very common in auto injuries. Look for a car with a prominent hood ornament. Those things are killers. Yeah, no kidding. Okay, let's just take a quick little look around, make sure there's nothing out in man's hat. Hmm. Nothing really stands out about that, huh? Don't even have a make on it. Fan. I should know about out here before I go talking to her. See? See? Look at this. It's the same beer every time. Look at this. Probably nothing. Probably no. Are you kidding? It's in every crime scene. Spark plugs. I don't think this is going to help us. Yeah, it's not going to help. Oh, there's something else here. Seems irrelevant. Yeah, okay. It's good to be sure. Huh, apparently I can go in through that door. Alright. Let's. Door? I'll take the bartender. You work the rest of the room. Oh, I'm doing this slightly out of sequence. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to look at this room until later. I, I did this a little out of order. It's fine, though. Let's go talk to... I want to talk to the bartender first. No, I want to check out this newspaper first, though. Have a seat. Thanks, Doctor. How are you finding working at the clinic? It's, uh, fine. Are you sure? Can I be honest with you, Doctor? I would hope so, Courtney. I was hoping that the therapy would be more beneficial. Treatment can, unfortunately, be very long-term. So many of the patients here are addicts, Doctor. Many of them have been for years, Courtney. In the past, these people were condemned to sanatoriums. We can reveal the root of the problem. Then we have a chance to help them. And until then, they stay sedated? Do I detect a hint of reproach, Courtney? I was expecting more, Doctor. I'm sorry. I don't mean to criticize. Part of being a physician, Courtney, is learning to be patient. How is it possible to keep so many of them on their medications, Doctor? Many of their addictions are illegal. Oh, many things in life are gray, Courtney. What may on the surface appear to be illegal is actually of benefit to society at large. Hmm. All right, let's go talk. Oh, that was one I hadn't seen before. Let's go talk to the witness first. She's all yours, Miss Perry. Yes. I'm Detective Phelps. This is my partner, Detective Bukowski. All right. Can you tell us what happened? Well, 
I uh, came to the window because I heard people arguing downstairs. Okay. I have no reason not to believe that. Then what happened? I saw a car hit that poor man and knock him down the street. Nailed that one. All right. What kind of car was it? A dark red Lincoln Continental. She's a car chick. Believe it. Did you see the license plate? Only the first three letters, I'm afraid. Three, C, eight. Nailed that one. Tell me more about the argument you heard. Well, there were two voices. A man and a woman. That's all. Okay. That's a first different facial change. Let's use an intuition here. Okay. I can doubt this. She's not, she's, that look is not the one she- Why are you holding out on us, Miss Perry? I'm sorry. I was hoping to tell my story to the newspapers. I'd like to get my picture in the paper. I'm trying to find work as an actress and things are pretty difficult. Cough it up, sister. We don't have all night. People arguing? They were husband and wife. I could tell by what she was yelling. Intimate things. Very embarrassing for the man. Yeah. Thank you, Miss Perry. Your information has been three very helpful. Three out of three. You can go now. You really think so? I hope you find that driver and put him away. Yes, sir. You certainly got away with the dames, Phelps. <laughs> Give it a rest, Bukowski. <laughs> Let's see what the patrons have to say. I don't think any of these guys I have to talk to. It's just... Oh, let me try it. Real happiness is when you marry a girl for love and you find out later she's got money. <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm Detective Phelps here. of the LAPD. How can I help, Detective? Your name would be a good start. Dudley Lynch. Hired help. I run the place when the owner ain't around. Where is the owner? <laughs> Bukowski's in my way. Somebody had to take Lorna, no. Mrs. Patterson, home. So I can't see his facial expressions too well. I guess my partner's in the way. <laughs> That's different. What can you tell me about the accident? Not a lot. It was busy in here, and all I heard was the impact. Doubt. So what was he doing outside? It's against licensing regulations to drink on the sidewalk. Mr. and Lorna were having a fight. The owner made him take it outside. It was pretty ugly. Believe that. Do you know the victim? Yeah. Lester Patterson. He's a regular here, or he was. Yeah, I believe that. Not one of your favorite customers? Lester was special, but... Not my kind of special. Was Lester drinking alone? No. He came here with his wife. She didn't seem too interested in the booze, though. Got that one. A witness overheard an argument. Lester and Lorna. There's nothing like airing your dirty laundry in public, is there? What was it about? That one should have been truth the because the other girl said those the same two thing. Off. Oh, we Thanks didn't get help, that Lynch. one. Damn. I'm going to need you to sign a statement with the patrolman. Sure, no problem. Damn it. You get I anything really out of the regulars? Sense. They weren't giving too much away. They liked watching Lester and Lorna go a few rounds every other day. And Lester was a fan of the love tap. Tell so you like to smack his wife around, huh? Looks like they had a phone call to make. Oh, that's right. I was supposed to mention something about the poker game. Operator, the message for that's KGPL. Putting you through now. Phelps, 1247. How could I help, Detective? I need to run a partial license plate, 3 Charles 8. Cross check possible Lincoln owners. Suspect vehicle is a red Lincoln Continental. Just a moment, detective. Only one possible make on that license. Registered to a William Shelton. 
738 West Temple Street. This is before Thanks, computers. I gave her a partial Looks like we caught a plate break on number. This one. She coughed up a name in seconds. She's faster than Google. That woman ain't getting paid enough. Master of the Rolodex? I mean, seriously. Los Angeles, 1947. Still had a lot of people. Let's not kid ourselves. Let's take the Studebaker police car. Why not? You can leave the Buick here. I might need the siren. Oh, apparently there's more clues here. Hang on a second. We didn't clear this. Oh, wait. Sometimes I don't think you get the line to clear out if, uh, if you get the answers wrong. But let's find out. Let me go run over here right quick. Just to be on the safe side. Yeah. See, we didn't ask the right questions to that guy, so he didn't even talk about the poker game. There's a good possibility that that's not going to cross off the list just because I made the mistake. Like, this guy's not going to have nothing to say. I don't think this guy does either. Wrinkled was not one of the things I wanted to be when I grew up. Yeah. I don't think we're going to see anything else here. Right? I can't talk to this guy some more. Sorry, pal. That's all I got. Even bartenders run out of gossip. That guy's dialogue is actually pretty good. But I'm pretty sure that's the end of the clues. So we're not gonna get a we're not gonna get full credit for that one, so it's not gonna cross that up the list, I'm pretty sure. I could use intuition to search for clues, but what's the point? Alright, so let's go to What was it, the Pattison residence? That's the guy who owns the car? Here we go. Let's go to the owner of the car's address. Where's my partner? Still stuck in that animation of smoking at the counter. Let's go find out. You need to take this up with Leroy. Around a bit. Any ideas? We've got to track down that Lincoln Phelps. We find the car, and then we nail the driver. All right, well, come on. Move. He's stuck. Maybe it'll fix itself when I get to the guy's house. Only one to find out. You look away from the screen for one second. <laughs> There's the car, and she looks worse for wear. Yeah, see, it redid the cutscene with the Buick. I don't like the in inconsistency, but I'll forgive it. At least my partner's in the car now. I staked out the car all night. <laughs> yeah. 
See, like you didn't even that try to cover up right the there. damage. William Shelton? Yes. It doesn't look good, Shelton. You packing your bags and making a run for it? You know why we're here. Yes. The accident. We've got witnesses who can put this car at the scene, not to mention the physical damage. This is open and shut, Shelton. That coward thinks he can run from everything. How far do you need to get? Busted girl. Hit maneuver. Got Whoa. Oops, Come on. I think I did that a little too early. <laughs> Try that again. Oh, God. I wonder if he killed someone driving like this. Hit maneuver. Go. Oh, I hit it twice. Don't let oh, that I asshole dare. get away. Damn it. This is going to suck for my fitness report. Move Enough it. games, Phelps. Take this guy out. There we go. Gotcha. Get out of the car. All right, I give up. That's it. Cuff him and we're done. Hands behind your head. Throwing in. How does a vehicular manslaughter rap sound, Shelton? I hit him. I admit it. I just panicked, but it wasn't my fault. What do you mean? The guy jumped right out in front of me. He came out of nowhere. There's nothing I could do about it. Why didn't you stop? I've had accidents before. That's it. We're done here. The DA is gonna love you. They weren't all my fault. I'm a surveyor. I need my license for my job. There were people around. A woman and a man were standing right next to him. I thought they could get him to a hospital. I'm telling you, it's not my fault. The guy is dead, Shelton. You can't be serious. William Shelton, you're coming downtown. We need to talk about a manslaughter charge. Leave the coroner and the paperwork. Procedure can wait. We should probably go speak to the wife and let her know what's happening. Let's go speak to okay. the wife. You become all hard at the prospect of paperwork, don't you? You're gonna get in the car or you're just gonna stare at it? Oh, I can't because this, these idiots keep getting in his way. Wait, stop, stop. No, I'm gonna take your Chevy. LAPD, police emergency. Come God, you know. There we go. Chevy style line. I didn't pick this car up, that's why I wanted it. Alright, let's go to the Patterson residence and go talk to the wife. I knew I didn't have this car on my list, that's mainly why I did that. Oh, look at all you guys. Like, I have to get around all that traffic. Go the wrong way to go the right way. Just say, what's really funny about the Chevy style line, this particular car, is if you look at it very carefully, it's not too far off for the next five years of Chevrolet Bel Air. They didn't change it much. And then all of a sudden, from 54, like up until 54, they look like this. And all of a sudden in 55, completely changed. And then in 56, changed again. 57, changed again. 58, changed again. Like, the budget is insane for automakers in the 50s. But man, what a time, right? For like cars? Holy crap. There's a there's a crime scene over there. I just saw it. If I had my police radio, I could have heard it. But I just saw the icon, so let's go over to it. Let's go find it. It's right here. Let's go check out this crime scene. Come on. Oh, it's right here. Like, literally right here. What's the situation? Uh, we got a hold up gun sour. Three guns locked themselves in with two hostages. I tried to go on the front, but the place is a fortress. 
I nearly got a mouthful of lead from my trouble. All right. Let's see if I can get in through the back. All right, I'll stay here and keep him busy. Let's go. Run back. Kicking the door open like that was probably a really bad idea, because now they know. Throw out the guns! Ah! Oh, shit. He's got a shotgun. Stay down! Ah! Wait, up the stairs! Get after it! Trained him. <laughs> Weapon down now. That's how that's solved. <laughs> it's like when Robocop shot the the woman hostage between the legs to hit the other guy in the junk. Yeah. Car 11K. I've been involved in a shooting at 333 South Main Street, Globe Loan and Jewelry. It's code four now, but the suspect is down. I need an ambulance here. I notify my supervisor and the coroner. 11K, Roger on the ambulance and coroner. Your supervisor will be notified. Uh, units 11K reports code 4 on the shooting at 333 South Main Street. Globe jewelry and loan. There's a 1940 Ford right there. I've already unlocked it, so I'm not going to take that guy's car. Thank you. You got something against Sirens, Phelps? Yes, yes I do. I don't want to announce that I'm on my way. Happy. Turn right when you can. I've already made my piece that YouTube will probably copyright claim every video in this game. Because the soundtrack is okay. The cars are so heavy, you're just not gonna catch air. Just not gonna happen. You'll be taking the next right. Yes? Hello? Mrs. Patterson. Is this about my husband? We're investigating the incident, ma'am. I see. Come in, won't you? She doesn't look very... in duress. We wanted to give you the facts about the accident, ma'am. I appreciate that, but I think I know most of them already, Detective. He was hit by a car, now he's dead. More is there to tell. Pardon me, but you don't appear to be too upset about it. Lester and I met on a furlough in 44. We got married that weekend. People don't understand it now, but that happened a lot back then. I see. So you probably did well to stick together this long. What's that supposed to mean, mister? I think it's about time you left. I have someone here, and Beg I... Beg your pardon? You're gonna have to run that one by us again, sister. It's okay, Lorna. I'm Leroy Sabo. Well, well. Nice to see you're comforting the grieving widow, Mr. Sabo. All right, wise guy. Do you have any intelligent questions you would like me to answer? 
You can confirm Mrs. Patterson's story. Lester lost at cards. He was kind of hard to control when he lost his temper. He turned without looking and walked right out in front of the car. It wasn't good. What's your relationship with Mrs. Patterson, Mr. Sabo? We're friends. Good friends. You expect me to believe that? Look, I was filing for divorce. Mental cruelty. Lester could be a mean son of a bitch. And Lester knew about that? No. I hadn't told him. Well, hasn't this worked out well for the two of you? I feel almost bad for busting in on this little rendezvous. <laughs> How did the car come to hit Lester? He walks straight into the path of an oncoming car. Look at that look on her face. He's so full of shit. You expect me to believe that, Lorna? It's all very convenient. Gambling for Lester was like the needle for a hophead. He was yelling at me. He was yelling at the whole world. I kind of felt sorry for the driver. Poor guy had no chance. Nailed that one. You were arguing in the bar and on the sidewalk? We were always arguing. So what? Uh, hmm. Okay, let's remove an option here. Truth or doubt. They were arguing. Everyone said they were arguing, so I guess that's correct. Then I need more than that. Like I said, Lester was a great guy when he was winning. A really sunny, bright guy. Trouble was, he hardly ever won. And when he lost, he was an evil son of a bitch. <laughs> We're leaving, yeah, Lorna, but this way. doesn't add up. We'll be keeping an eye on you. Come on, Phelps. Let's make ourselves scarce. <sighs> Wait, phone? Where's the phone? It's supposed to be right in front of me. Is it in the house? Yeah. Operator, give me dispatch. Phelps badge 1247. How can I help, Detective? Any messages? Messages, please. Just one detective from the coroner. Message reads, Phelps, see me at Central Morgue immediately. Results of the Patterson autopsy. Ooh. Thanks for your help. That guy, Mal works quick. All right, let's go back to the Central Morgue. Those, you two can go back to doing naughty adult I'm out of here, Lorna. I got a business to run. How far away from Central? Turn right. Those two met on a furlough, so he had a, he had like a, a liberty pass. Hung out, got drunk, found a hot girl, got married. Units, units can handle code 2, identify. Sure, we can take that call. Where is it on the map? We're here. Where's the call? Like, I'm pretty sure there was a call. It's not going to be way out here yet. Hmm. Here? No. We're here. Oh, it's way over here. Alright, let's go there. Straight ahead. Sometimes the sirens work, they all just stop. Even the oncoming. Very convenient.
Take the next right. No. I'll take night. Doing this on bias flies. <laughs> Lady, get out of the road. Uncle Sam's Army surplus. I don't know what you're talking about. We weren't doing nothing. I'm seeing you little sons of bitches brawling around my store. I'll show you. I'll, I'll teach you not to. Sir, drop the weapon. You've been drinking, sir. You don't really want to. Three times I've been robbed. Ain't nothing gets done about it. Oh. What? Look out, more of them. Put them down. I hit him in the arm, the shoulder, and in the brain. I brained that one too. 1911's <laughs> legit. Two world wars. <laughs> 11 King calling KGPL. I've been involved in a shooting. Suspects are down. Need an ambulance. It's 540 oh, West 9th Street. Guy. It's code 4. Notify a supervisor in the corner. Roger, 11K. All units be advised. Suspects are down at 540 West 9th Street. Shooting at Uncle Sam's Army surplus is code 4. Nobody told you to rob the surplus door. Nobody told you to meet me. <laughs> That's the... All right, I don't want to drive this. I want to drive that. What do we have here? Chevy. Fleet Master Convertible. I, apparently, I didn't find this one before either. Nice. Nice color. Yeah, buddy. My horn works too. Chevy. We can put the driver in front of a judge in less than a week. You'd be making a big mistake. Run that by me again? The victim was dead before the car hit him. Two puncture wounds to the right side of the thorax. Second puncture reached his heart. You're kidding me. Been doing this job 23 years, son. No one's ever laughed at one of my jokes. He was stabbed to death? Long, sharp knife. Length of a bayonet. Damn. So the hit and run was a cover-up. I'd say yep. he was stabbed twice at very close quarters. Both wounds thrusting upwards and then pushed in front of the car. <laughs> Easy, Tiger. Clever, really. I almost missed it. You, how are you going to miss them holes? The wounds was all wrong if he was impaled by the hood ornament. That's how. Find the knife, detectives. Yes, sir. 
It all comes back to the crime scene. We gotta find the knife back. We need to hit Ray's one more time and trawl for evidence. How did I miss that? I know how I missed it because we weren't looking for it. Nor were we trying to look for it. So there was some truth to Sheldon's cock and bull story after all. He didn't stop, but he didn't kill Patterson either. I'm no betting man, but I know where I'd put all my chips. The grieving phrase. widow and her shoulder to cry on. Now all we need is a murder weapon. You know, when I was <laughs> when I was growing up in my teens to mid twenties, we used to have a saying: "Her next shoulder to cry on is her next <clears throat> to sit on." Just saying. That's basically what these guys are saying. I mean, let's be honest, this whole series is PG-13, isn't it? <laughs> the language, the, the borderline racism of the characters, soundtrack, demonetization rules, let's be honest. Let's not beat around the bush. Alright, so we are back at the bar. I'm looking for a knife. Leave. I'm going to find it in a trash can. Oof. I'm sure Carruthers will confirm this as the murder weapon. Let's talk to Leroy. See him explain his way out of this. Right. We has knife. I know that, but where where do I find him? He said he went back to work. I probably had to call it in. Maybe. Leroy Sabo, you're under arrest oh, he, for the murder he of Lester runs this Pattis. Place. Not gonna happen, fellas. Holy sh! Are you serious? Go. I'll bring the car around and head him off. Yeah, okay. It's too late, Sabo. Oh, wait, I don't think I was supposed to shoot him. Well, he took a shot at me. You look spooked, Phelps. I thought you'd been under fire before. He did take a shot Never at us. Never gets any easier, Bukowski. Have patrol pick up Mrs. Patterson. That guy had to go. He murdered somebody. He took a shot at a police officer. What's the point of bringing him in? They're just going to gas chamber him anyway. I just saved the taxpayer a ton of money. So, I give you a hit and run. You bring me back fraud, conspiracy, and first-degree murder. Yep. This is how a good detective operates, Phelps. And I gave you body you take counts. nothing at face value. You keep digging and asking questions until you get to the truth. You got some sharp elbows on me, detective. I like that. Keep up the good work. Awesome. And we didn't cause any injuries, and we still got distinguished, and we still kept it within an hour. So this was Ponery's Kicking It Old School. I believe this was episode 11? 12? I forgot. Anyway, if you like what you see, leave me a like. And if you like this game, check the link in the description below, because it is available on Steam, and it was on sale at the time of recording this. Anyway, if you're new to my channel, welcome. But if you're a regular here, welcome back. Either way, check out my other playlist and maybe see if my other interests will be of interest to you. And maybe it'll even motivate me to record more stuff for those playlists. I don't know, life's been busy. Anyway, let's read the case notes. 
Summoning a brief of evidence sooner might have netted you Lorna as well as Leroy. Yeah, if I found the damn knife first, I guess. Whatever. But how was I supposed to know? And maybe you can't find the knife until after the autopsy anyway, right? I guess. Anyway, until next week, we'll see you later.